First of all, good morning, everyone. I'm Simona Dimico from University of Naples, Partenope. And in this presentation, I'm, I'm going to show you our paper, which involves a techno-economic analysis of an on-site hydrogen refueling station for a uh, mobility sector. Well, start from the background. Uh, you know that uh, you, you always uh, um, look that the, the fuel cell electric vehicles diffusion is uh, uh, larger in these last years but uh, in order that we can talk about the transition to an hydrogen based mobility it is important to develop an infrastructure that must be able to satisfy the hydrogen demand uh, obviously if the the, the share of the if the spread of the fuel cell electric vehicles become more and more great we have to be able to refuel these vehicles this is the reason why we need to realize hydrogen refueling stations but to get but now today there are several issues related to the realization of the hydrogen refueling stations consider that the the main issues is obviously related to the high investment costs for realizing them uh, especially when we talk about of on-site hydrogen refueling station it means that in this case hydrogen is produced on site and so consider that the technologies uh, when we talk about of renewable sources for producing hydrogen we need of technologies that are so much expensive and so it in, in involves that uh, uh, currently with these technologies and so for realizing these hydrogen refueling station the, co the investment costs are so high and as a consequence uh, the hydrogen retail price uh, uh, the, the hydrogen um, um, retail selling price is uh, high so Starting from this background, what we have done in this study, we have uh, proposed a techno-economic analysis for an on-site hydrogen refueling station in which green hydrogen is produced on-site by means of an electrolysis unit integrated with a grid connected PV plant. Well, for this station, we analyze different plant configurations that differs both in terms of hydrogen production capacity. As a matter of fact, we consider three different uh, hydrogen production capacity. The first one uh, in which we consider a plant which produces about 50 kilograms per day of hydrogen. A second one in which we consider to produce 100 kilograms per day of hydrogen. And the last one in which we consider to produce 200 kilograms per day of hydrogen. But uh, in, uh, besides the different hydrogen production capacity, we analyzed also several plant configurations which differs, differ in terms of electricity mix. What does it mean? It means that we consider different sharing of electricity supplied between the grid and the, the PV plant. Well, for each one of these configurations, we carried out also an economic evaluation by assessing the, le the levelized cost of hydrogen. Start from the, 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 the hydrogen refueling station itself. Well, in this slide, you can see the, the scheme, the layout of the proposed on site hydrogen refueling station. Look at together. Consider that the hydrogen production occurs in this component. There is an electrolysis unit that is fed both by the grid and PV plant. As I said uh, in the previous slide, we considered several management strategies which involves the, the annual electricity share between the grid and the PV plant for feeding the electrolysis unit in order that the hydrogen production can occur. Well, when hydrogen is produced, it is compressed in order to reach the operating condition of to, in, to be used as a um, to be to be used for refueling the fuel cell electric vehicles. But before before entering the fuel cell electric vehicles, obviously after the compressor the compression it is stored, it the hydrogen needs to be cooled uh, and then it is dispensed to the fuel cell electric vehicle. Uh, look that this way. I will I will give you more information about this process in the next slides okay well uh, as I say before for this plant we consider different configurations uh, which differs both in, ter in terms of plant size that in terms of electricity mix in this table you can see summarized all the information I have given it to you until now so you can see the, the micro the small and the medium hydrogen refilling station which means 50 kilograms per day 100 kilogram per day 200 kilogram per day and for each one of these plant sides we analyzed the four energy supply management strategies which involved these what involved this management strategy 
this strategy involved uh, um, the, the annual electric share uh, from PV and grid that has to be given to the electrolysis unit for producing hydrogen. The first management strategy we consider is uh, named full grid. In this case, uh, it means that the PV does not operate, and so we consider that the all electric energy needed for hydrogen production came from the grid. So we're talking about 100% full grid. In the second case, we consider a high grid. It means that in this case, we consider that part of the annual electricity came from the, the PV, but only a, a small quantity, 25%, since the 75% comes from the grid. The mid-grid, which is the, the strategy in which we have an equal share of annual electricity between the PV and the grid, and at least the low grid, in which we have a low penetration of electricity from grid, but the high content is given by the PV, the 75% in particular. Okay, once defined the strategy, I just want to uh, show you the component we have selected for realizing this hydrogen refueling station, starting from the, the main component, um, which uh, is the electrolysis unit, uh, thanks to which it is possible to uh, produce hydrogen. Okay, well, for this analysis, we consider an, an alkaline electrolysis unit, which is uh, able to produce 50 kilograms per day uh, with an output power of 180 kilowatt. So, basing on this <coughs> module specification uh, and consider all the hydrogen production capacity uh, for the, um, the, the small and the medium hydrogen refueling station, we consider two modules of this electrolysis unit and four modules uh, of this uh, unit respectively. Consider that the hydrogen from electrolysis unit is available at a pressure of 10 bar but uh, I don't, you know that, uh, that the hydrogen uh, is uh, um, used in the fuel cell electric vehicles at a high temperature uh, pressure. We are talking about seven, uh, 700 bars. So uh, we need a compression phase, thanks to which it is possible to compress hydrogen from 10 bar to 820 bar. Uh, we have a higher pressure with respect to the operating pressure of the fuel cell electric, the fuel cell electric vehicles, since we have to consider, obviously, the the last years. Uh, for this plant, we have considered a, a cascade system in which we compress hydrogen and we have uh, storage tanks uh, disposed in cascades. So we fill, first of all, the low pressure tank, then the medium pressure tank, and then the high pressure tank. According to the plant side, uh, we consider a compressor unit of 73 kilowatt, 146 kilowatt, and 292 kilowatt for micro, small, and medium hydrogen refueling station, respectively. Okay, uh, as I said, when I showed to you the layout of the plant, uh, once hydrogen is compressed and stored, it is needed to be uh, cool. It is needed to be to, to, cool, to be cooled. Why? Because the hydrogen is a gas uh, which uh, shows an inverse Joule Thompson coefficient. What does it mean? It means that during the expansion phase, the hydrogen temperature has to increase. So, in order to, to assure the safety of the tank on board the uh, vehicle, uh, it is needed that the temperature of hydrogen has to be in, in, a, in a certain range, and it is uh, not exceed the 85 uh, Celsius degree. This is the reasons why, uh, for safety condition and according to the protocol SEA J2601, the hydrogen has to be pre-cooled uh, to minus 40 Celsius degree uh, in order that we can assure the safety condition uh, for the tank on board the fuel cell electric vehicles. Here you can see all the assumptions we have done. In particular, we have considered one dispenser for the micro hydrogen refueling station, two dispensers for the, the the small and medium hydrogen refueling station. The fueling time is uh, five minutes, and uh, which we uh, consider that the, the onboard average storage capacity is five kilograms. For <coughs> sorry, <coughs> sorry, 
for cooling uh, for cooling hydrogen uh, to this temperature we need a refrigerator unit of 5 10 and 20 kilowatt for micro small and medium hydrogen refilling system respectively get back to the PV plant where for this analysis, we consider a 250 watt peak power monocrystalline unit. In this figure, you can see the monthly electric production of the PV plant. And according to this monthly electric production and according to the size of the PV power plant, we have selected according once defined the, the strategy from uh, uh, electricity share between PV and grid, uh, we uh, have considered the, <clears throat> the annual electric production. Look at this table in particular. This table allows you to understand for each uh, size of uh, uh, hydrogen refueling station and for each electricity mix, uh, what is the contribution in terms of annual electricity which comes from the grid, what is the contribution in terms of electricity which comes from the PV, uh, and also the PV sites for each one of these uh, configurations. Why? The, the, the first question is this one. Why we have considered this electric management supply strategy? Why we have a share of electricity between the grid and PV? The answer is simple. Because the PV uh, being an, a, a renewable source, it shows an intermittent uh, behavior. And so uh, when the PV is not able to produce enough electricity to satisfy the electrolysis unit, the grid compensates with the electricity, this electricity deficit. On the other hand, when the electricity from the PV is higher and it is enough for satisfying the requirement for the, 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 the electrolysis unit and we have an excess, we can divert this electricity excess to the grid. Over a year, this electricity excess is equal to the electricity deficit. Thus, if from an energetic point of view, this deficit and this excess are balanced, it is not true from an economic point of view because we have a different price in purchasing electricity and a different remuneration price for selling it. Well, once defined the technical characteristics of the different configuration for the proposed on-site hydrogen refueling stations, we assessed the economic performance of this uh, plant by defining the capex, uh, such as the capital expenditure, the opex, uh, such as the operational expenditure, as well as the replacement expenditure. And at the end, we evaluated the levelized cost of hydrogen, which is the more important indicator among the economic evaluation index since it allows to understand what is the cost for producing hydrogen by considering all the computation costs from the capital expenditure to the operational expenditure to the replacement cost uh, and so on. Here you can see the main assumption in terms of cost, for example, the capital cost for the PV, the, 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 the pro electricity per case price for, um, <clears throat> and the, the remuneration for electricity and so on. Let's skip up to the levelized cost of hydrogen calculation. Well, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> the LCOH is calculated as the ratio between the total costs and the hydrogen annual production. In particular, the total costs are defined as the annualized investment cost, the annualized replacement cost, the operating and maintenance costs, and we have considered also the revenue which comes from the sold of the uh, electricity sets from people. How we have analyzed the investment cost as well as the uh, replacement cost? We have analyzed this cost by considering this factor, the CRF factor, which takes into account the N, which is the, the lifetime of the plant we assume is equal to 20 years, and the nominal interest rate E, which is assumed equal to 3%. So the analyzed investment cost is calculated with this relation, as well as the replacement, the analyzed replacement cost. Just an information about this term, this T, which refers to the time in which the replacement is needed, because you have to consider that some components during the lifetime of the plant wearing out, so it is needed to replace them. 
the uh, the revenue for uh, selling uh, selling uh, electricity is calculated uh, by considering obviously the, the quantity so the, the electricity we have to to divert it to the grid multiplying it for the, the, the remuneration price of electricity get back to results and discussion in this figure, you can see the results in terms of levelized cost of hydrogen for the micro, small and medium hydrogen refillings. This one for each uh, energy supply management strategy. You can see that uh, the, the size of the plant uh, has a significant uh, uh, value in influence, a significant influence. Why? Because uh, from micro to medium, we have a reduction in LCOH of about 20%. The best configuration is reached for the medium hydrogen refilling station. We have a mid grid energy supply strategy, so 50% from PV and 50% from grid. In this case, we have 9.29 euro per kilogram as LCOH. While the worst, the worst case is given for the micro hydrogen refilling station, in which we consider that all the electricity needed from the electrolysis unit came from the grid. In this case, we uh, obtained the levelized cost of hydrogen of about 12.5 euro per, per kilogram. But we have seen together in previous slides that the levelized cost of hydrogen is calculated uh, by uh, computing the operating and maintenance cost, the investment cost, and the replacement cost. So, look together uh, for each one of these cases, uh, what is the great incidence for each case of, of, the, of each one of these cost items on the levelized cost of hydrogen? From this figure, you can see that the, the cost items, which has a great incidence in each case, is represented by the operating and maintenance costs. Why? Why? The, the reason is the, 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 the following, because the operating and maintenance cost includes the, 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 the cost for purchasing electricity. And so, since we are considered that these, these um, this hydrogen refilling station is to be installed in south of Italy, so we are talking about in Italy. We have considered the electricity price from the, uh, uh, the, 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 the Italy market, but this result suggests that if we consider the same analysis in different countries, in particular in countries in which the electricity price is lower, we can have a reduction in the levelized cost of hydrogen. Okay, the best configuration we have reached, uh, uh, as I said before, is the medium hydrogen refilling station we, uh, in which we have, as an electricity management strategy, the 50%. So 50% of electricity from Pebu, 50% of electricity from grid. For this configuration, considering that the cost items which has the great incidence on LTOH is uh, the, uh, the operating and maintenance cost, look together. What are the components which uh, involves to have these operating and maintenance costs so high? In this figure, you can see what are the, the, the section which uh, affects the operating and maintenance costs for the best solution we have uh, obtained. In particular, as you can see, the high incidence is given by the hydrogen production section. We are talking about of 74%. And uh, uh, this result is due to, to, to the fact that we have considered the energy consumption consuming technologies. Uh, so, uh, if we want to reduce this value, we can consider uh, um, we can consider technologies which uh, which uh, have more efficient more efficient technologies. Uh, for example, pan-based electrolyzers, which involves a, a lower consumption of electricity. So we can affirm that for this analysis from economic point of view, we reached the best configuration uh, with an LCOH of 9.29 euro per kilogram with an hydrogen refilling station of 200 kilograms per day, a 50% of electricity came from grid and 50% uh, from people. Obviously, this value is current with the state of art, but it is high if compared with the current hydrogen um, uh, selling price. Consider that in Bolzano, the only hydrogen refilling station uh, present in Italy, the hydrogen is currently sold uh, at uh, 11.3 uh, uh, euro per kilogram. In this purpose, in a recent paper we have published in Energy Conversion and Management, here you can see the, the reference of this paper. Uh, hope you can read it with, uh, with passion and with, uh, with curiosity. We have evaluated the initiative strategy for assuring the economic sustainability of these on-site hydrogen refueling stations. 
This strategy is based on the economic valorization of the CO2 emissions that can be avoided by adopting this hydrogen pathway compared to the gasoline one. Okay, in which way we have, uh, we have uh, uh, conducted this analysis? First of all, we have evaluated, we have calculated the CO2 emissions that can be avoided with the hydrogen pathway in comparison with the gasoline one uh, by, by adopting, by applying the well to wheel analysis. And then we valorize it from an economic point of view, these avoided, these avoided emissions by applying the life cycle cost analysis. Here you can see uh, in this figure, the well to wheel for the gasoline pathway from the oil well drilling operation until its utilization in the uh, in the vehicle and we compared it one with dual to wheel related to the hydrogen supply chain obviously you know that when we use hydrogen in the fuel cell electric vehicle so we don't have emission of co2 but uh, along the entire supply chain of hydrogen we we we, we have a co2 emission especially if we consider the electricity from grid Consider that the, the, the I, won't, I won't repeat it again, the hydrogen refueling station we are considering in this analysis is the same we have seen at the beginning. And so the, 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 the hydrogen refueling station we have analyzed together, but considering this capacity, so 200 kilograms per day, and the share of electricity for filling the electrolysis unit, which is 50% uh, uh, from grid and 50% from PV plant. Here you can see the results of well to wheel analysis. In particular, if you look at this figure, you can see just, that just from a, uh, in terms of gram for CO2 uh, per kilo per kilometer, the gasoline pathway has a higher value if compared with the, the hydrogen. But what we have done in this well to wheel analysis, we started from the capacity of our hydrogen refilling station, which is 200 kilogram per day, uh, and it means uh, uh, 72 tons per year. And we consider that this hydrogen is able for covering a distance of 7.3 million of kilometers. Uh, uh, for these, in this condition, we consider that in, uh, during one year, the uh, emissions uh, of CO2 related to this hydrogen pathway uh, amounts to 950 tons. For the same kilometers and the same vehicle using condition, the gasoline pathway involves 1,270 tons of CO2. So, in this analysis, we I can affirm that the hydrogen pathway allows to have a reduction of CO2 emission of about 333.8%, uh, so to avoiding an amount of CO2 of about 320 tons per year. So once obtaining this value, we applied the life cost of uh, sorry the life cycle cost analysis for valorizing the uh, amount of CO2 avoided from an economic point of view in order to reduce the life cost of hydrogen we have obtained at the beginning to reduce the discounted payback period, which, which is for the configuration we have seen until now 11.5 years, and to uh, uh, increase the profitability index, which is 1.66. In which way we have performed life cycle cost analysis? We uh, tried to calculate the incentive for this uh, quantity, the, this amount of CO2, by fixing uh, two different discounted payback period. The first one is 10 years and then the second one is eight years. In the first case, so if we want to return on investment in a period of 10 years, we need that we need an incentive of 65 euro per ton of CO2 of CO avoided CO2. If we want to return on investment after eight years, we have to return on investment. Uh, um, we, uh, we need an, an incentive of 327 uh, euro per a ton of avoided CO2. What does it mean? So what does this value mean? These values mean that uh, uh, according to uh, the, the uh, assuming the, the lifetime of 20 years, uh, we need if we want to return on investment of uh, after uh, 10 years, we need that about the 30% of the total capital investment has to be co-founded. If we want to return on investment after eight years, we need a co-found uh, of about uh, 63%. But this value, these values are not so strange 
think that for the, the, the uh, realization of the hydrogen refueling station in Bolzano, about the 50% of the capital investment uh, were be, was, uh, um, was uh, co-found uh, by public uh, financing. Okay, assuming these incentives at the end, uh, we were able also, also to calculate the, the new levelized cost of hydrogen, which decreases uh, with the, the discounted payback period of 10 years to 9 euro per kilogram, with the discounted payback period of 8 years to 7.8 euro per kilogram. Obviously, the profitability index in, 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 um, increases from 2.12 uh, in the case of 8 years and uh, 1.75 in the case of. Uh, 10 years okay in conclusion what we can do we can do that according to the the stringent condition for reducing the co2 emission the energy transition is needed hydrogen can allow us to perform these uh, these uh, transition uh, especially if we want to use hydrogen in the uh, in the mobility sector for doing it we have to develop the hydrogen refueling infrastructure for assuring the uh, it, the, the dam dam refueling uh, uh, obviously what we have done in this paper is to calculate to consider uh, to perform a techno-economic analysis of an on-site hydrogen refueling station. For it, we calculated the best levelized cost of hydrogen equal to 9.29. And in order to reduce this value, we proposed an incentive strategy uh, which, uh, in, uh, which uh, um, uh, con involves to consider the uh, amount of CO2 we can avoid uh, by adopting the hydrogen pathway with respect to the gasoline one. We, uh, uh, we, um, uh, calculating these uh, avoided CO2 amount, applying the wet-to-wheel analysis, and valorizing it uh, uh, by applying a life cycle cost analysis. We calculated two different uh, uh, incentives for returning on the investment after a period of 10 years and 10 years, and we were able, so at the end, to calculate the new levelized cost of hydrogen values, which decreases to 9 euro per kilogram and 7.86 uh, euro per kilogram, respectively. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope I'm in, I'm in time.